The Book of Puk, Fifteen Lessons A young man sat and pondered the next phase of his life. It is time, he said, for a girlfriend. Yet this new course in life seemed both exciting and frightening. But success will not come without much failure, he realized. If only there was a way to avoid the painful trials ahead. And then, like magic, appeared a pook. As like anyone shocked by the sudden appearance of a pook, he was speechless. But this happened to be a talkative pook, who said, I will guide you. The constant heartbreak, the loneliness, the feeling of having no control, these can be avoided. Follow me, and I will show you many of the lessons that must be learned. Oh, pook! the young man cried out. Would it not be better to throw myself into initial error? Is not error the best way to success? No, your heart does not need to be shattered to realize its lessons. Do successful marriages come from a series of failed ones? Of course not, for foresight teaches gently, error teaches brutally. And with that the young man asked, and what is the first lesson? The pook replied, Follow and see. Thus the young man followed Pook to a nearby college campus. Pook then said, Behold the first example. Lesson 1 A young man, overflowing with desire, saw a woman he thought was extremely cute. She was simply walking around and was involved with her own things. I should speak to her, he told himself. I must meet her. But his body would not obey. He stood there, watching her in the corner of his eye, and felt as if he was burning. She eventually left, and he cursed himself even more. Then appeared another woman who was even cuter. I should say hi, he told himself. Yet he stood like a statue, and his body felt as if he was burning. She is out of my league, she would never go for someone like me. He never approached, and the woman left. Yet another woman appeared, more beautiful than the first two. Somehow, he got himself to approach. Uh, hi, he sputtered nervously. She was pleasant. He eventually asked for the number, to which she said no. Even though he failed, he felt much better that he tried. Alas! he said, now realizing the error of his ways. Rejection is better than regret. Remember, said Pook, change is gradual. Before you saw no opportunities, now you see them all about you. Yet you are too hesitant to take them. You are slowly becoming more aware. What are you saying? When you find yourself hesitant, always yield to action. If you see her, do not wait, gawk, or wait for the perfect moment. Action! 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 Pook, I cannot, because you see I am insecure. I don't have that confidence. You are confusing cause with effect. The cause of your hesitant nature is not because of your insecurity. You have not gotten what you've wanted, what you've desired. That is the cause of your hesitant nature. What? You are caught in the vicious cycle. You are hesitant because you are not used to things going your way. And things will never go your way because you remain hesitant. You see what you want, become hesitant, and the door of opportunity closes. It happens again and again and again. With each choice toward inaction, you reject yourself a little bit more. Pook continued. This is where the cycle of hesitation leads. In your world of hesitation, you shred off more and more of your manliness until you turn into a full-fledged nice guy. Then you seek to remove hesitation by making the approach risk-free. Then you start giving gifts, poetry, flowers, and declarations of love. You start to examine and then re-examine non-existent signals until they read the way you want them to read. In the end, you place her on the pedestal and throw yourself into her worship. 
If there's a choice between less pain and the possibility of more pain, we default to the less pain. In adolescence, going for a girl and failing made you think everyone else would laugh at you. Whether or not it was true, you thought it was true. This was how you were kept within the cycle. But Pook, how do I get out? By realizing that the choice of inaction is more painful than action. Childhood is over. You are the man. You must approach. Always default to action now. For those of us who wasted years in that hesitation mode know that rejection is always better than regret. Always. Lesson 2 The woman enters the house, followed by a guy. The guy is all smiles, thinking that great acts of intimacy are about to occur. But alas, the woman launches into a rant about men. My ex-boyfriend was such a jerk, she began. Why is it that men treat me so roughly? The guy then transformed into Mr. Sensitive. There, there, he purrs. They do not know how great you are. You are beautiful, lovely, enchanting, dazzling in every way, and they are idiots when they cannot see it. You are so nice. What a friend you are, she squeals. Let me tell you more of my problems with men. And so the guy, who was excited because great acts of intimacy would occur, leaves severely disappointed with a hollow feeling echoing throughout him. I thought that through friendship, love would eventually spring. How wrong I was! A friend she sees, a friend you be. When he entered the house, the guy noticed a sign above the door. At the time, he was too excited to even consider reading it. Now that he was leaving, he read it. So true, he cried, for the sign above the door read, Friendship. Abandon all hope, ye who enter. But why, Pook? Why is friendship hopeless? I fall in love with my female friends. Do they not do the same? Pook then called up a woman. She appeared in a blaze of fire, probably from the place which all women are from. O oh, woman, pray tell, why do you not go after your male friends? The woman looked amazed that anyone could ask her that. Why, because they're just friends. But do they not fall in love with you? Yes, my male friends constantly fall in love with me. And speak truly, madam, what do you and your male friends do? Oh, well, we hang out, we talk a lot. Talk? About what? Everything, anything. And they fall in love with you? Yes. Ah, said the pook. Now we have the answer. Away with you! And the woman vanished in a fireball. What answer? Why, it is a difference between the sexes. Young man, what do you do with your friends? He looked thoughtful. We play basketball, we ride around town, we play video games, we... But do you and your friends ever sit around and talk about your feelings and things going on in your life? The young man looked angry. Hell no! There is your answer. Men do not get together and just talk. We do things. When we are with our women friends, we talk much more. Since we reserve our talking, sharing emotions and experiences to our romantic interests, we get confused with our female friends. We begin to get interested in them because of this. But what about women, Pook? Pook pointed to the telephone lines above them. Lightning surged and glowed along the lines. The phone lines! They are on fire! Indeed. When women get together, what do they do? The young men looked at the fiery lines. They talk! About what? He looked thoughtful as sparks rained down on him. Everything! Women usually aren't used to getting together and doing pure action, so when they do so with their guy friends, they get a bit confused as well. I see. So avoid the friendship route. When you see a woman you are interested in, go for her romantically. For a friend she sees, a friend you shall always be. Lesson 3 A guy called a woman and asked her out. The guy was nervous, was scared, he was shy. So we're all set for tomorrow night, right? Um, yeah, she replied. 
Then tomorrow night came. The guy agonized over the date the entire day. How should he act? What shall he wear? Did he have enough money? Would he be fun enough? But the poor guy realized he was wasting his time worrying, for there was no date. He got stood up. Obviously, there had to be a reason. Perhaps something awful happened. Perhaps her car didn't start. Perhaps some incredible thing occurred in her life at that time that kept apart the two star-crossed lovers. So he tried again. Did we miscommunicate? Oh, um, uh, yeah. You still want to go out? Sure. Let's go out on this and this day, okay? Okay. That day comes. The guy gets stood up yet again. But he rationalized it away. She did say she had things going on in her life. She did say she wanted to go out with him. She did say that she wouldn't mind spending time with him. Obviously, something had to come up. After all, she said she wanted to go. So the guy calls again and sets up another date. Likewise, he got stood up again. Ah! he screams to himself. It is my fault, for I should judge by actions, not by words. Pook then took the young man to a wall with a majestic painting on it. The painting showed a young man, much like the young man in person, standing before a feminine monster, a sphinx. What is that monster? cried the young man. Why, said the Pook, it is all women, Mother Nature herself. This nasty sphinx devours all hearts and lives of those who cannot answer her riddle. That man in the picture, he figured out the riddle to woman. Thus he became known as Don Juan. And the answer to the riddle is that there is no riddle. Woman is a sphinx with no secret. It is only our minds that we assign her secrets, mysteries, pedestals, and goddess-like status. Pook noticed that the young man was confused, so he elaborated. Look at the above example. Look at how the lad got stood up over and over, and yet, over and over, he rationalized the standing up. How often is it that a lad rationalizes signals to his liking? How often is it that a lad offers gifts and treasures as sacrifices to her goddess likeness? For in his mind, she is a goddess. How often is it that a lad's overactive imagination converts her disrespect, her shallowness, her flaws into love? So we paint the image we want to see? Exactly. Judge by her actions and not by her words. Judge by what she does rather than what your mind wants to see. Our vanity will convert the image of every disinterested girl into secretly loving us. For women tell us what we want to hear. This is why we must judge by her actions and not by her words. Lesson 4 A man found himself in the company of lovely ladies. Alas, also in company were several men of high esteem. They were more handsome, they had more money, they had more charm. They were better in every way. But this man knew he had the goods too, if not in such a polished way. I will be patient and let the cards fall where they may. Notice that this was not inaction or an abrupt slowness. He did not let the lovely lady's attention get the best of him, nor the success or failures of his competition. The lovely ladies would cry, Come here, you! and the other guys would rush to them. When they did this to the man, though, he just laughed and replied and went on his way. The other guys, more handsome, more beautiful, lost the girls because they could not hold back their desire for a girlfriend. The patient man ended up with the girls. Now I understand, he smiled with both girls on his arms. Patience is the refined sense of confidence. But Pook, cried the young man, how can patience be confidence? Isn't confidence courage? Isn't confidence action? How is patience courageous or action? Oh, foolish boy. And Pook slapped him. Now let us summon up a Don Juan and observe his mannerisms. In a fountain of light descended a Don Juan. Hear me, O oh Don Juan. There are women around, and other men are hitting on them. What is your reaction? The Don Juan just shrugged his shoulders and laughed. 
What? cried the young man. These other guys are going to take his women. How can he be so laid back? He is laid back because he knows how great a catch he is and that getting women is easy. He knows he is the prince. But the women are not significant. The focus must be on you. The guys that can get almost any women are not scared or nervous that other guys are hitting on girls. He knows things the other guys never will. In fact, he might let them have free reign to weed out the desperate and stupid chicks from the smart and picky ones. As with muscles, it is the strong guys that know they are capable, who are quiet and patient. It is the noisy guys that lack the skills. It is the large dogs that are quieter while the small dogs make up for their size with their obnoxious bark. It is the patient ones that control the world. The impatient ones are controlled by it. Lesson 5 A woman was crushing on him badly, and the guy was bewildered and stunned, for this was unfamiliar ground for him. He was now wise enough to have patience, but... She would get close to him. Her eyes would shine like stars. She would make jokes about kissing and kisses. He felt the urge to kiss her, but denied it. Eventually the iron grew cold. The woman became disinterested. She moved on. Oh dear, the guy realized. I should have kissed her. I have been following philosophies and not being myself. I should follow my inner nature and... Trust the gut. How do you trust the gut? asked the young man. Pook led him to a breakfast table. Before it sat a kid. Now how does the kid know to eat? Why, the food is right in front of him. His nose smells it. His eyes see it. He drools. And so it is the same with women. What does the kid do next? He takes a taste. But how does he know when to do it? His senses all tell him to do so. He knows when to eat because the food has been prepared, has been cooked, and is presented before him. But what mechanism tells him that? The young man smiled. His gut! And so it is the same with women. They have been prepared through decades of aging and growth for this purpose. They dream it. They want it. Oh, heavens, do they want it. They have been warmed through your fun, through your attention, through their desire, through your desire. They are presented through themselves. Do you think she was wearing what she does for herself? No, she is wearing it for you. Women are not ornaments to be admired. They are there to be consumed. You know it. They know it. I see. Nature has a system in place. No philosophy in the world can do you any good. The philosophies that supposedly work are ones that best match nature's music. You can either flow with the system and get what you want, or you can buck it in pain. So listen to that gut. Lesson 6 The guy was on a prowl for a girlfriend. He approached many girls and did everything he could to win them. He failed miserably. With one girl he brought flowers. With another girl he brought her gifts. Yet with another girl he brought her candy. In conversations, he would be agreeable to everything she said. In matters of planning, he would reschedule anything and everything on her whim. The women would become his son, with his entire life merely orbiting around them. But the poor guy kept crashing and burning. It is because they don't know how good you are, older women and friends would say. Yet the guy noticed a pattern in his crashing and burns. The only constant is I. What if it is something I keep doing? He stayed the same. Unsurprisingly, he crashed and burned more. Eventually, something in him snapped. No more, he said. Why am I acting like a beggar? I am smart, handsome, have a future, and women ought to work to get me. So thus stopped the flowers, gifts, and candy, the agreeableness, rescheduling and revolving around her whims. No more pedestals, he declared, for you are the great catch. Yes, says the pook, you are the prize to be won. The young man jumped up and down with joy. 
Goody, that means I get to be passive, to continue to indulge my vaporous habits and not do a thing to alter myself. I like to hear that because it means I am perfect as I am and ought not to change for anyone. Pook slapped him. Foolish youth! If you are not changed by life, then you are not living life. Only those who are not altered by life are those totally unaware of it. But the young man was stubborn. He said with a moral tone, I will not change for anyone. What about for yourself? I like myself the way I am. All right, enough. The young man was startled. He had never seen Pook angry. I am what I am, he persisted. So Pook summoned two young men. Each stood in a corner. Pook then said, Before us are two youths who are on the threshold of life. Both have the same origins, yet the destinations are different. Let us look at the first one. What was witnessed was that young man growing up. If he got a bump on his head, he would cry to his mother. He would pull on her apron strings. He felt safety and comfort in his mother. With his father, he felt an uncertain fear within him. His father was the one who set punishments, the deadlines, the lessons that had to be learned. He preferred the company of his mother, who seemed free from those hard edges. Now the second young man's childhood came into view. His life was exactly the same. Is there a point to this? protested the impatient young man. Watch, said the pook. The first young man never broke free from the enticing womb-like feeling around his mother. He sought to replicate it over and over. Off he tumbled into reality like tumbleweed blown every which way by the winds of his age. He didn't know what he wanted to do in his life, so he did what everyone around him did. He was captive to his friends, never seeking to break apart to tend to his own matters or such. The playtime was too important to him, a part of that sense of ease and joy he had around his mother. He eventually found a girl, chose the first one that actually liked him, or tolerated him, he couldn't know, and married. Alas, the marriage lasted only a few years until divorce came. Why did she leave me? whined the pathetic male. I cherished her. I brought her flowers every day. I sang her sonnets. I always told her I loved her. She complained. He disgusted me. The man goes through life broken and rebroken, trying fruitlessly to rebuild that sandcastle of childhood fun, while waves of reality kept crashing down upon him. He dies forgotten and irrelevant. Oh, cried the young man, that is awful. What is so awful? Pook replied. He was, after all, just being himself. Now for the second young man. This young man quickly realized that childhood was over. Rather than looking towards forever replicating that sense of summer vacation of escapefulness and feminine bliss, he launched himself at reality. I will not live my life as a nothing, he declared. His friends and family were astonished at his constant self-improvement, his constant blossoming of talent and will. He, in turn, was astonished at them. It is like, he would say, that they are stuck in a type of stasis. I have changed. They acknowledge that, but they are exactly the same. He got to pick what woman he wanted. He got to pick what career he wanted. He got to pick his destiny. He answered life's challenges and refused to retreat from them. Whereas the first young man was defined by the age within which he lived, the second man defined the age himself. When he died, countless people mourned, for they thought he was a genius. Others thought he was talented beyond description, yet others thought he was touched by heaven itself. After all, how else could these poor fools realize such success? It could have been made, they said. He had to be born with it. No, it was because he was a man who chose to grind up the world, culture, and all to his vision, rather than be ground up into the worldly culture's axing wheel of routine and fashion. The difference is simple, said the Pook. The first young man is facing towards infancy, the second young man facing away from infancy. The first one wishes to climb back into the womb, the second one wants to fly from it. 
The first wishes a cushioned place in the world, while the second one leaves the cushions behind. The first one is ordinary, the second one extraordinary. Thus the second one becomes the great catch, while the first one merely becomes a filler of a void. I see, said the startled young man. The second one is always getting better. The first one is always staying the same, if not getting worse. Exactly. It is the difference between rotting and ripening. Be the good fruit. Be the prize to be won. Lesson 7 This young man thought he had become successful with his desire. Boyfriend and girlfriend were they. The hard, awkward early moments had finally gone. All was good except... I am hungry. Are they not always hungry? Fetch me lunch. Poor young man. He had enough wisdom not to do this earlier, but now, he told himself, Oh, she is my girlfriend. I must make her happy. He brought her lunch. After feeding her face, was she satisfied? No. For she said, I need to do this and this at work today. It would be wonderful if you would go get supplies for me. And off the nice guy went. And when he returned, there was another task. Poor nice guy. On and on it went. More tasks, more chores. He became wrapped around her finger. Then it happened. I think we should just be friends, she said. The nice guy was devastated, but also he was puzzled. He did everything he could to please her. And this was the result? Ah, he realized. By pleasing her whims, I lost track of mine. A servant you'll be, a friend she'll see, as... Respect is all. But, Pook, why, why should respect be so vital? I am not equipped to answer such a question. Let us ask a great philosopher. And then out of nowhere appeared Socrates. Attention, Socrates, you have been summoned. Did you know that? Answer the question that is respect. And Socrates replied, That is an easy one, Pook. Where there is reverence, there is fear. But there is not reverence everywhere that there is fear, because fear presumably has a wider extension than reverence. Socrates then vanished in a whirl of bluish smoke. O oh, wise sage, salient soul, respect is the realization of set boundaries. After all, how can reverence become without any sense of fear of you walking away? For true passion with women can only come when the man can easily walk away. The great catch walking away is woman's great fear. Walk away? Yes. Now let us ask a question to that opposite sex. Arise, woman! The woman enters with flare and fire. Answer this riddle. Why do men who are willing to walk away turn you on? And the woman laughs. Didn't everyone know this? A man that can walk away means he has his pick of the litter, and the woman can be easily replaced. You won't find the lawyer or doctor or politician be entangled to a woman at first. Away you go! The woman melted in a blaze of fire and flame. So the great catch is always willing to walk away. The great catch is respect. She is supposed to celebrate life with you, not use you as a peon. Be a man, and respect attends to itself. Lesson 8 Now the young man had battle plans galore for the women. If she does this, he said, I will do this. He memorized the interest signals and was stuffed with philosophies. Yet he noticed that the guys who did know nothing of seduction scored left and right. How did they do it? Also, he faced a big problem. Talking to a woman normally he was fine with. Talking to her with a sexual outcome made him feel guilty and dirty. He knew being desireless was keeping him from being desperate, but it wasn't getting him women. In fact, it seemed that those guys desiring the women would have their desire reflected back. Then it hit him. Only the sexual ones get the girls. Look, says Pook, the woman has invited the nice guy to her pleasure palace. She is wearing sexy clothing. The young man nearly nods and drools. She is being a woman. The young man nods enthusiastically. She simply 
is. Now look at the nice guy. The nice guy was very frustrated and looked extraordinarily nervous. Why, he is not being male. He's not being what he is. Enough! Pook summoned up another example. Here the nice guy is leeching off the woman in a pathetic friendship way. Anyway, let us ask the woman. Does Mr. Nice Guy have a penis? What? Mr. Nice Guy? No way. He could never have a penis. But the young man was still confused. I still don't get it. What do you want a relationship with a girl to be about? Um... Do you want to talk about DNA or genetics all day? The young man laughed. Of course not! Then stop talking to her about DNA and genetics. Stop talking to her about geek things. You do not need another lab partner. I want sex. I want a sexual relationship. Then embrace your own sexuality. Be a guy. Talk like a guy. Act like a guy. Do action things. It is one thing to talk about things you love, but most guys talk about things just to talk. Sexualize myself, my appearance, and my actions, and the women will naturally follow? Exactly. Lesson 9 Oh, how he wanted success with women. Why did others do so well and he so poorly? All jocks did was breathe and grunt to get chicks, and he did everything possible with no success. Alas, the pangs of despised love. She was beautiful, wonderful, but only wanted him as a friend. In fact, every girl he held desirous thoughts about thought of him only as a friend or less. It was time for a change. Information was the key he knew. He devoured books, articles, anything at all about the nature of women and creating romantic success. Then he met a Spanish guy named Manuel. Manuel said, Behold, for here is your better plan. Psychological maneuvers. You shall learn neuro-linguistic programming. Now speak like this. When you have that connection with someone, that warm, safe, and comfortable feeling right there, then what sometimes can happen is... With Manuel, women became a sum of psychological instruments to be played to his tune. Guides... You shall learn and memorize the booklets of societal situations with women. Now he knew to do this when she did that, to do that when she did this, and so on and so forth. Following Manuel's guides, he met a consistent success. Ceaseless information. You shall never have too much information, commanded Manuel. Thus countless articles, countless posts streamed underneath the young man's eyes. At the end of the day, he was still in front of the computer. I love you, Manuel, the young man cried. Any problems, any situations, Manuel would always have an answer. He would consult with Manuel day and night, memorize Manuel's teachings, and worship Manuel. But uh-oh, something was not right. He had burned the mantra in his mind. Thou shalt never stay on the phone longer than twenty minutes only to break it with a startling success. Also ingrained was the mantra, Thou shalt never compromise. And lo and behold, when he broke this rule, he usually crashed and burned, but this time he achieved a high-flying success. Soon the rules that had so framed his courtly actions disintegrated. Ah, he realized, these guides and rules were a clutch for my lack of confidence, they do, however, work, but are overall limited. Then he smiled. The rules and guides are the training wheels, the helper out of the nest. No more shall he be completely dictated by that Spanish guy named Manuel. He could fly now and soar on his own. So, be not contained by formula. If the rules and guides were successful, why would he abandon them? because he realized he was successful not by the rules and guides, but by the approaching and fun mindset that the rules and guides demanded. The young man, as ever, was confused. So Pook, with his seemingly endless magical abilities, summed up two men. One of these, he said, is an actor. And the three watched the actor become Hercules, Henry V, 
Hamlet, and every hero with a capital H, but in person this actor transformed into a wimp. What happened to the hero? wondered the young man. Then he saw the other man in action. He is heroic, marveled the young man. Indeed, said the book. One is naturally confident, the other is scripted. What is wrong with the scripted? Nothing. But it is critical to realize the purpose of scripts and guides. Which is what? Pook then took the young man to a place that overlooked two crowds of young men. One group kept rushing back and forth to the man on the center pedestal, the Spanish guy named Manuel. The other group consulted Manuel only here and there, but traveled off in new blazing fresh paths. What is the point? It is simple, Pook declared. The point of Manuel is not to grant you success. If you do, you will forever be under his dictatorship. The entire reason why Manuel exists is not to grant you success, but illustrate the means of success. Meaning? Meaning that a few people became successful and formed Manuel out from the clay of their knowledge. Manuel is their automaton, their robot, to consistently answer newbies' questions. The end goal in seduction, in success, is to make it natural. When it becomes natural, you have no need for Manuel and can handle anything women throw at you. Arg! The young man pulled his hair. I used to think women were nice and charming, that only bad boys were the problem. This knowledge is shattering every ideal I held about women. Pook nodded. These are but a few of the harsh truths. Lesson 10 Why did some guys succeed with women without even trying while other guys fail with women no matter how hard they try? Why did these guys seemingly arrogant get women? Why did these jerks succeed where he, the nice guy, failed? Because you're a whip, answered the jerks. But the nice guy responded in a bashful tone. I am but myself. I will never change for anybody. But this nice guy wasn't receiving any dates, either. Ha <laughs> ha, you're such a wimp, said the jerks. The hot girls would laugh behind his back. What a desperate chump. Desperate? Why was he acting as if the women were better than he? Why should he win her? Let her win him. Why buy her gifts? Let her buy him gifts. This new attitude got him all the dates he needed. But why did he not adopt that mindset before? He remembered the past voices in his head. What did they say? Let us hear them. You do not have muscles. What makes you think you can get hot women? You are not that smart. Why do you think you can get the pick of the group? You do not have a high-paying job. Why do you think you deserve a hottie? And the loudest, most annoying voice. You are not as cute or as handsome as the other guys. Therefore, you do not deserve a hot chick. Alas, he knew he was not Prince Charming, and so he did not act like one. But now he realized that Prince Charming is not the producer of the confident thought. To the contrary, the confident thought is the producer of the Prince Charming. In order to be successful in the world, you must be successful in your mind. That is the secret, he said during his revelation, for As you think, you shall become, and so long as you think, so long you remain free. But Pook, what are you, a self-improvement seminar? Where is the woman in this? Women come and go, but you are forever. The focus must be on you. What do you want in a girl? What do you want to do for a date? What type of relationship are you looking for? It is a machine to the one. You push the button and out she comes. But Pook, what if she does not like your date ideas? What if she is different from what you are looking for? Then she is not for you. The thing girls hate is when you cannot have a date idea which happens to guys because they want to please her without thinking of themselves. You have a series of hobbies and tastes. If she likes your date ideas, then that is good. 
But if she doesn't, then go get another girl. There are billions out there. But that is rejection. Pook slapped the young man. Only if you place the focus on the woman. If you do that, then you actually believe it is women who are making the choice, not you. There is no rejection. You are merely finding out if she has good taste. After all, she is looking for a guy that fits her interests and dates. If she doesn't like you for whatever reason, let her, and thank her for doing so. Thank her? Which would you prefer, a woman who collapses her own interests for the sake of yours, merely to have a boyfriend, or a woman who likes you because of you? Because our tastes, our compatibility runs parallel. Indeed. Now think back to your nice guy days, those suffering days of endless agreement and non-confrontation. What service did you do to help find compatibility? Oh, alas, no. The young man's face turned white as he realized the utter disgust he was in about his old ways. I am so ashamed. You are not the only one, said the pook. Look into the valley. Look at how man has fallen. And the young man looked into the valley. There he saw hordes of nice guys throwing themselves toward an idol, the golden woman statue. Flowers, chocolate, bad poetry, and declarations of love were all tossed at the statue. Thunder then exploded. Then, out of nowhere, in a graceful light and melodies of enchanted harps, appeared the Don Juan. What is he doing here? muttered Pook. This was not scheduled in the post. Indeed, the Don Juan spirit can appear in any post whenever he wishes. The young man called out, Speak, spirit! I will call out to it. Pook cupped his mouth. Where from did you come? The spirit stood there, silent, with a confident air of invulnerability. Pook then yelled, Oh, speak, perturbed spirit! Speak thy truth! And the spirit, in great anger of how men have turned into beastly chumps, threw the tablets he held at the fleeing nice guys. He spoke these words, then vanished into a fountain of light. You cannot be yourself without truthfully seeing yourself. You cannot sacrifice character for joyfulness without ultimately destroying happiness. You cannot control the situation, but you can control yourself, your emotions, and your life. You cannot have women love you until you love yourself. You cannot grasp the female nature until you grasp your male nature. You cannot wean her until you focus on her weaning you. You cannot fully know the principles of this website until you leave it. You cannot obtain love by giving yours away for free. You cannot fulfill your desire by letting it trump your integrity. You cannot be yourself by denying your dreams and what it takes to achieve them. Lesson 11 Comfortable with himself and his successful habits, he relaxed and reacquainted himself with his friends. He noticed they had lady problems. Why are women female? One opined. Everything would be so much simpler if they weren't female and would logically make sense. Indeed, they are not just female, but so annoyingly female. And on and on they complained. Years later, the young man found his old friends married or in serious relationships. In every single one, the girl chose him. Each and every one of them was chronically unhappy. However, they wouldn't admit it to themselves. They said, What, you're still single? Oh, poor guy. You will one day progress and get a chick like us. Indeed, said another. I just got a new girlfriend, and you are still single? Heh. <laughs> And a third said, We are all married or have girlfriends, but you, poor chap, are still single. You need to start listening to our advice. And together they said, Give the woman flowers, chocolate, poetry, declarations of love, your full attention, your promises, your exclusiveness, your time, your dreams, your life, and adopt her desires, her plans, her manipulations, and her designs on your future. The young man laughed. Shrug off my manhood for a girl? No thanks. 
for getting a girl is not the success. Pook, whatever do you mean by this? Most guys still think like women. They think that by sleeping with lots of women, by having a girlfriend, or by having a wife, means they are successful with women. You mean that beggars can't be choosers? You mean for guys to pick the girl rather than the other way around? You're close, sir, and that is true, but women date for all sorts of reasons. They marry for all sorts of reasons. They sleep with you for all sorts of reasons. To the addition of the above, you want to find a woman that is interested in you. I don't understand. So Pook summoned forth a guy and his girlfriend. The guy, smug, says, I got a girlfriend now. Pook summoned a single guy into the room. The coupled guy smugly said, Oh, poor thing, you will get a girl like me one day. The single guy bowed his head and looked sad. Alas, he had no chick. Boo-hoo. Now, said the pook, let us fast forward several years. Years later, the guy and his girlfriend got married. Why did they marry? Guys defining their success on having a woman or women. They should rather be concerned with having a woman that does actually like them. Why do you say this, Pook? It sounds like a bit more work. Yes, but if you do this, then you won't be like the following. She said she loved me and we got married. Why does she want a divorce now? All my friends thought she was a keeper, so why is she cheating on me with her ex? She won't return my repeated calls. What's going on? I do her date ideas, and she thought I was boring. What does that mean? Pook shook his head. When you aim at something long-term, you need to make sure the woman likes you. Just because she dates you, sleeps with you, and yes, even marries you, does not mean she likes you. So what should I do? You define what the dates are at first. She will work with you if she likes you. You can soften up later, like in a couple of months. If she starts breaking dates, giving you the runaround, or seems inflexible, then that should be warning signs that she doesn't like you. I see, but what if you are so awful at Don wanting that no woman likes you? Then you'll have more free time with your buddies. Success cannot be getting a girl because that means failure is being alone. No. Failure is being in an unhappy marriage or a relationship where she has no true interest in you. So the focus must be on you, including her interest. Right. Drop the getting a girl means success mantra and you will never be dumped. Lesson 12 The young man showered himself with the ladies daily. Oh, how sweet this life seemed. But how sour... Its effects were. He felt hollow, as if he wasn't true to something, and then a voice swelled up inside him. Pestilence! You cannot keep me caged forever! What are you, cruel voice? Your words are like a dagger in my heart. Then you are not valiant, for you feel the pointed tip like a soft worm. I am you, your inner self, your own imagination, and if you like, your soul. By caging me, your successes with women will spike with increasing frustration. What? You are the one that is spreading this emptiness through my body like a virus. You craven, dismal, dreaming miscreant. You know you are now getting what you desired. Women. So why are you so unhappy? Oh, voice most cruel and foul, you are the rudeliest welcome to this world. My answer is... Because I haven't found the right one. No, you wimple, beef-witted wagtail. You have divided your emotions from yourself, your imagination from reality, your true personality from the universe. But I had to change because I wasn't getting the women. And you failed because by keeping me caged, you limit yourself. I only act in accordance with what women want. But women want you to live in your own world, to stop bending over to be spanked, and not in a good way. A willy-billy translating into a tampon that every woman uses for her needs, emotional, physical, social, etc. 
You are the equivalent of a woman doing whatever to please the men. Yes, the girl that is the smokehouse where every man does place his meat. You are the magical tampon where every woman does place in her. Oh, you are a crusty botch of nature. All the things women want. Confidence, humor, spontaneous fun. These are all qualities of a man living out his imagination. Embrace your dreams. Stop trying to be perfect in woman's eyes, for you'll be wrong in the truest commandment with sexuality. Do not bore women, and... Unite dream and day. Goodly youth, you have gotten a letter. The youth was excited. A letter for me? He hurried to rip it open. Who is it from? Read. And the youth did. He looked at Pook. The address says the letter is from Womaniverse. Indeed, like a heaven over us, the ladies in Womaniverse watch us over. Yes, they always notice you. They look at your life and reward the men of the world with the feminine element. But not all men get the same type? Oh no, some get virgin material while fools get common ore. What else can you tell me about this feminine element? It is highly relaxing, very ornamental in sports cars, explodes or freezes for no reason, and reacts well to gold, platinum, or any of the precious metals. It also turns green when placed near superior specimens. What are you saying, Pook? That how we are the rock in their world? That they are the rock and element of ballast for us in this universe? Oh, silly youth! These thoughts are too feathery and fluff at nothingness in your dimension. Don't think of it. Only read the letter. Do the women write to us men often? Rarely. Usually women speak in womanese, so we men don't hear anything anyway. But, being a dutiful pook, an emissary myself, I have translated the letter to masculine terms. Oh, thank heavens! Now I see why it's in nineteenth-century style. Just read the letter. The youth held up the letter and read, Dear sir, do not be ungrateful to the women. They surprised you, perhaps shocked you, but they also prepared unexpected triumphs for you as author. Among these successes will be the control and direction you place on your life and your destiny. But alas, these will not be the fate for most. Indeed, for many of you, you remove one kingly focus only to place another error in its place. Instead of abolishing the throne, you just throw new systems and techniques on it. This is the cycle of chomptom. Yet there is good reason to say that the ways of nature are as infallible as they are inscrutable. For if you just grant us a moment, which we shall very soon try to demonstrate for our messenger, Monsieur Le Pouc, we will show you a revolutionary revolution. The throne that kept controlling your life in some way, some fashion, will finally be shattered, and no matter what system you place upon it. Your fellow nobles, all ambitious with their dagger eyes, will try to place themselves on this throne of your world, to get you to live in their world. They will crown themselves with your dreams and say, Look at me, I am the object and axis of your world. My whims become your laws. What you enjoy today, including your tastes in women, food, and cars, will be dictated by me. I alone will frame the world you live. Oh, you pitiful youth, there you go, bowing down, letting people control you. But locked within you is a Promethean fire just waiting to unleash, phoenix-like, a sexual combustion of soul and desire, whose ingredients of dreams and thoughts lay ready and abundant within you. All you must do is combine these ingredients, combine your thoughts and actions, your dream and day, and watch that throne be swept away. Oh, Pook, how strange these women be! Indeed, one of the biggest surprises of my transformations into Don Juan was not that the older women noticing the difference, no. It was that they said, It is like you have grown up. Why did they say that, Pook? Because it was the truth. Why do you let people mold and shape your life? Your life is going in circles because you cannot tear yourself from your loser friends or stupid entertainment. 
Keep reading the letter. The difference between a Don Juan and a chump is the difference between a man and a child. Make no mistake, the Don Juan world and the chump world are as different as heaven is to hell. You see, sir, there was a time when this was known. Men strived and created a world of their own. They took what they wanted and asked questions later. They had designs on what they wanted to do in life and how to get there. What we women despise most is the broken male. It is the drifter, the nice guy, the chump, who, when the focus of your energies is misplaced, production and energy are wasted and undone. Years of your life can pass by in this tragic manner. Or worse, when the focus becomes seen as something that it is not, the male becomes the nice guy, just as the dog becomes a sheepdog, provided nature does not guide it to freedom. The life of a man is not to be coddled and guided. All men are called to be leaders. Even if it is not to guide other men, you are meant to guide your own household, protect it, and keep your wife and children from the paths of error, defending your fruits of nature from the locusts and storms of time. The youth put down the letter. How odd and strange this note is! Pook smiled. If one day you actually get a chance to enter Womaniverse, you'll be even more amazed. And the key to get to Womaniverse is to unite your dream and day. It is the only way. Lesson 13 Alas, whenever the young man approached a woman, a thousand Don Juan philosophies came to thwart his peace. All these ideas clogged his action. Then he remembered how awesome he was with women when he was a little kid. He was always the Don Juan of the sandbox. He wondered, have women really changed? No, only in his mind. At heart, women are still little girls. So when he saw the luscious babe sitting there, he smiled and saw a bored little girl looking for fun. He would make fun of her, do physical action things with her, take her by the hand to lead her somewhere, and she thought he was the perfect guy. I understand now the source of cocky and funny, he smiled. Charm is treating women like little girls. This is the most sexist thing I've ever heard. You doubtful youth. You are a beanstalk, cynic, a crusty philosopher. How can you argue so rudely against me? Look, when we were young, we all desired to grow up. Now, once grown up, we desire to be young again. Being poor, you trade your time and health for money, only to use that money for time and health. We have all passed through the world of a child. Are you saying I ought to be childlike? Yes. Young kids lacking the chemical madness curse that puberty brings us are at perfect ease and treat the sexes appropriately. No young boys will say, Whatever you want to do. Young boys run around. They do not sit and talk to the girls all night. Young boys have their cars, their trucks, their dangers and excitements. Now compare the young boys' actions to those who are really successful with women. The youth was alarmed. They are identical. I always thought women were immature for going after these so-called jerks, bad boys and jocks. I see that in some way they are immature. But they kept that joy of youth with them, whereas I had killed it. Youth, what do you do on a date? Why, I... Speak to her about philosophy, about literature, about the designs on the universe, about DNA, about world events, about... Stop! I can take no more. Come and drink from this fountain of youth. And the youth did so. All of those paper bullets of the brain ceased. Now all I want to do is do things and not talk. I want to run around. I want to have fun. And women go crazy over these types of guys. Some people are so scared of growing older that they become extremely aged in their youthful flesh. Now you will be the envy of every philosopher, scholar, thinker, and deep analyzer. You will be in the world they have no access to. Nothing has changed. The attitude you had toward girls when you were in the sandbox is exactly the attitude you need now. So think young and live. Lesson 14 
The young man had one problem left. He would be very successful with women from one-night stands, from casual dating, from relationships, and so on. Yet every now and then he got that feeling of something bursting through his chest like a creature popping out. The woman would talk to him. Blah, blah, blah. He felt inside a very sweet but gooish feeling. She would go on. Blah, blah, blah. And he felt the sickly warm feeling spread throughout his body. What was happening? Blah, 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 the girl continued as he felt the feeling spreading throughout his body, paralyzing him like a poison. She went on, blah, 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 oblivious as he was collapsing from this sickness. The next day he had this overwhelming urge to send her chocolate, flowers, and bad poetry. It was too much, and he gave in and said, You are my life. I love nothing else so well as you. I will do anything for you. And she said, I think we should just be friends. Oh, that AFC disease rose up again in him. How does one smash it forever? He smiled and realized, Always have a backup chick. But Pook, perhaps this guy was falling in love. No, it was a false love. Come and see. Pook led the youth inside every man's heart. Inside the cavernous room, each surrounding wall depicted television screens with a graphic. What is this place? Every guy has passion about different things. On that wall is his car passion. We see many screens of different cars, all the ones he loves. On that wall over there is his food passion. We see screens of all his favorite foods. And if you come along here, you'll find the ambition wall, where the screens show all the things he wants to do. Now look at the woman wall. Pook, there's only one picture on it. Yes, nature has designed us to love in a marriage way when there is only one picture on that wall. I can understand that, but where is the problem? The problem is that he is not married or engaged to her, so he is acting married to her when they are only dating or just friends. Oh, dear... Yes, when a guy decides to go dating and dates only one chick at a time, only one picture will appear on the wall. When there is only one, he is designed to think of her in a marriage way, so he starts becoming another frustrated chump with this girl he just talked to. So say if a guy is socially unskilled and has only one friend that is a girl, only that girl's picture will appear on the wall? And because of that, he will fall in love with his friend? Exactly. If there is only one fuck buddy, he will eventually want to date the girl, want to become exclusive with her, and turn into a total AFC. But if he has a backup chick, then another girl is on the wall as well. He can't act married if there is more than one girl up there. Thus, he stops becoming a latent AFC. But what if the girl has his interest in other things? Shouldn't he date only one girl then? No. Either go for many or go for none. If you go for one, you will become an AFC. Most guys are too lazy or too scared to go for multiple girls. So they remain AFCs and forever remain in the vicious cycle. Lesson 15 the young man had all the knowledge he could dream about women and life. He stepped into the casino of life and approached the game. A man placed the dice, the new ones the young man had been so busy forging in his mind, into the young man's hands. Pook, I recognize the young man you speak of. It is you. Alas, I've been only telling you my own recollections with every lesson here. When I condemn the young man... I am only condemning myself. Let us continue. Pook looked onto the board and saw the squares of victory with their prizes. He shook the dice in his hand, knowing it wasn't the victories earned that mattered. The zest of life is the rattle of dice in the cup, he said to himself. The game's master asked, Monsieur Le Pook, how much are you willing to bet on the throw of your dice? Pook looked at his dice. They were the dice of talent, dreams, and endurance. He looked at his stack of chips, one color being whatever property and things he had, 
another being his societal connections, including that of his family and friends, and the most treasured type of chip of one's most awesome resource, time. Pook told the game's master, Put it all on the table. The game's master looked alarmed. But if you do that, you may lose all your property, all your society, and all your time, and just your life. Are you willing to bet all that on your talent, dreams, and endurance? Everyone in the casino was looking at Pook now. Very, very few people bet it all. All on the table, Pook repeated, rattling the dice. Laughing, he rolled the bones and said, The greatest risk you can take in life is not to risk it all. You can be the smartest person in the world, the most talented, the most persistent, but you will never win in the world or with women unless you embrace the glory of risk. But Pook, I am scared of risk. What if I lose? Pook slapped the youth. You cannot lose. Everyone wants to define your life, to shape it to their ends. From politicians to your friends, everything is all right as long as you stay you. But if you break out of the mold, everyone... And I do mean everyone will try to stop you. So how can we not lose? Just as on the battlefield, the valiant warrior losing in glorious battle is honorable. It is not the victory that defines the man, it is the fight. There are some people who somehow have this curse of bad luck and must eat an excrement sandwich every day. They win every time they struggle against that. So to risk is to fight then all this knowledge and insights are merely the sword, shield, armor, and weapons we fight with. And those who fight unarmed are more worthy than those who sit there completely clad with the finest weapons? Yes. Paradise, spoken slowly, is literally a pair of dice. Gamble what you have, for if you bury your talent and dreams to sit on it, you will receive the wrath of heaven. Unworthy servant! will be screamed at you. But what if the situation seems impossible? What if all odds seem against you? What happens then? Pook, exhausted from this post, began to vanish toward the Pook place, where all Pooks come from. Just remember, opportunities are brilliantly disguised as impossible situations.